All right, hello everyone, it's Silver Cal here, and today I'm gonna to be going over my strategy guides. And I really enjoy collecting strategy guides, not necessarily for the walkthroughs themselves, because you can pretty much find any video game walkthrough online, whether it be uh, written text or even a video here on YouTube uh, where you can see the actual game. Uh, but even then, when I do get stumped uh, in a game or I'm getting frustrated and I really wanna know how to get to the next section or beat a boss, I still like having a physical copy like in your hands um, and just you know flipping through the pages to get to the section that you're at and figure out oh, okay this is what I have to do and just following it along by moving over the page. There's just something a little bit more rewarding or, or something I, I, very basic that I like about that uh, instead of having to look at a screen and scroll down a bunch of text or find a specific location in the video that you're at. It's just something more rewarding uh, about this. Maybe it's because I'm old school and this is how you had to do it when you were younger. Uh, back in the 90s, growing up in the 90s and playing video games, if you wanted a walkthrough, you had to have the strategy guide. So that could be it as well. But I also like just collecting them. Uh, and over the years, that's kind of where they've been heading. Uh, as you can see, this is the first uh, Pokemon strategy guide. And this, I think, is the first strategy guide that I ever owned. Uh, and I just loved it because there's just so much information there. Um, and very thin, uh, you know, it's uh, very basic to the point, uh, which is fine. But then you have like later versions. Um, this is Pokemon X and Y, the strategy guide here. And this is kind of like a collector's edition um, where they have a sleeve that's very shiny. You know, there's a lot more attention to detail here. Uh, like there's a lot of time that went into this to make it look that much more presentable. You can look at this and you can see the different sections uh, even. Uh, so there's just a lot more in them. There's extra goodies. Uh, here we have a cloth um, of the legendary Pokemon. On the flip side, you have the starters. And so you have the cover. And then over that, you have the actual cover. So it's something completely different as well. And this, this once again, just looks fantastic. Uh, I love that look. Uh, in the back, you have the Kalos region map. Just a lot of cool stuff that kind of make uh, collecting strategy guides worthwhile. So anyway, uh, let's just uh, quickly go through all my strategy guides here. Most of them will be RPGs just because uh, there's more things to look up like statistics for weapons, armor, monsters, what have you. Um, so here's my first one that I think I ever owned. Uh, this is what got me really into um, strategy guides and part of it is the artist's take on certain... So. Here, let's show you an example. Um, what would be a good example? So they show you, obviously you're gonna see renditions of the uh, game itself, and you, you're gonna see this throughout the game, so that's not really exciting. But what I like seeing is the artist's take on the Pokemon. Uh, so this is you know, a completely different look at what they would look like. And that, man, when I saw this, I was just blown away, and I just thought that all the Pokemon were just so much cuter and adorable and more realistic to an extent. Um, I just fell in love uh, with like oh, the Blastoise right there. It just looks so freaking awesome. Uh, so th that's another reason why I enjoy strategy guides just so much. All right, so that's uh, Pokemon. Uh, then we'll take a look at the um, Pokemon X and Y. This is just so much information here. And I like that too, the starters right there. Just everything about this I loved. Oh, <laughs> another goodie right there. I'm not going to look at everything uh, for these strategy guys, just going to quickly kind of like pan through them. Uh, one thing I will say though about the newer strategy guides is that um, you have to have, for Pokemon anyway, I think there's like two parts to it, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, this is another strategy guide that I know is crazy old and I've kept it in relatively good condition. Uh, pretty thick too, and that's Blizzard though. Blizzard has some of the best strategy guides ever uh, for their games because there's so much in their games. So there's gonna be like lore. Um, I don't know if there's lore in Warcraft 2. I know in Warcraft 3 there's lore. So here, a whole majority of it is the maps. Uh, so you kind of have, for RTS games, I find that they're very uh, useful because you can kind of, you can look at a map and try to figure out how to go about um, strategizing and planning and, and finding out what resources to go to first, um, you know, how to attack a certain person. So it's really good. Um, here we have, okay, that's, and, and once again, just the art that I was talking about. Like, look at that, that just looks freaking awesome. Um, 
It's too bad that uh, a lot of the older strategy guides are black and white, uh, but also just look at the font there. It's just, you, I look at this and I'm like, yeah, that's like mid nineties PC gaming right there, which is awesome. It just brings me back. Uh, so there is Warcraft 2. Uh, now we have Warcraft 3. And as you can see, some of them, sometimes if they're a little bit uh, some some of these uh, strategy guys are used already, but some of them, like this one, I bought when it was brand new, and if I used it a lot, this starts to happen. Um, oh, just fantastic artwork there. Uh, like I said, though, I, I don't like that uh, they're black and white. But another thing, too, that was really useful is to kind of have uh, these also for the build trees there. Um, so to how to get certain units, they'll show you uh, what buildings you need to get. Um, which is really cool. And another thing too is if you've never played a specific genre, the beginning always has like a really good startup of how to go about doing that. But I, I know that there's lore in here. I, I thought there was lore. I'd have to specifically look, but there's a lot in the um, Blizzard games because you, you just read that and you have an entire good story right there. And uh, now we have Diablo 2. Uh, I looked at this so much as well, trying to figure out what spells I wanted to use for certain classes. Uh, just so, so useful. Um, and Diablo is just, I, I love the tone of Diablo. More Diablo 1 and 2, because uh, it's just so creepy, I find. Uh, now we have, um, let's go into the Final Fantasies here. Uh, I own two uh, Final Fantasy 8s. Uh, not only is this the first RPG that I ever owned, uh, but uh, I have two strategy guys, and that's because my girlfriend uh, owned one of them, and while we were going around to Goodwill, uh, we saw another one for 50 cents, so we picked it up, because she wasn't 100% certain if she had uh, this one or not, but either way, uh, for 50 cents, you can't go wrong. It's a little bit more beaten up <laughs> than the other one, but still for 50 cents. I'm not complaining. And there's just so, there, this is where, I guess maybe Final Fantasy games, they started adding more because there was a lot more into these games. Uh, like finding every nook and cranny. And plus they are RPGs, so they're crazy long as well. Final Fantasy IX and Final Fantasy X. Uh, this one's my girlfriend's. And this one as well. I think, yeah, she had all, all... I didn't have any of the Final Fantasies, which is a shame. Or no, we recently just bought this one uh, together. So <laughs> it's both of ours. This one's... Uh, Really nice, and Vivi, ah, just. You'll... Another thing too about strategy guys that I really enjoy is looking through this and uh, after you've played the game and just looking at specific scenes and, and you're able to kind of, instead of going back and playing the game, you can just reminisce by looking at specific scenes from the game. Um, and then you kind of get the craving to go back and play the game. Uh, but I, I like doing that. I just like flipping through these sometimes when I'm not even wanting to play the game. Uh, just to kind of go back. Uh, Final Fantasy X. Yeah, lots of bright colors in uh, Final Fantasy X. Not only in the game, but the strategy guide. Like that's really well done. And, and every strategy, strategy guide is different. Um, as you'll see with uh, Zelda here, um, the Ocarina of Time, and there's a few different ones for Ocarina of Time I've seen like different from different uh, companies. So this is Brady Games, but I think I've seen one from Prima possibly. But this one, this one's different because of the layout, and they they have screens of just like generic stuff in the background from the game itself. And I don't know how I feel about that. How <laughs> like it's kind of cool, but I find that it's really just kind of it's just it's not appealing to see how the layout is of of these uh, so it, which is cool though because then every strategy guide is different um, I don't know there's just something about strategy guides is what I'm trying to get at that's that's my point here Legend of Dragoon this I is unfortunately really thin but uh what's in it is just fantastic uh, Legend of Dragoon is one of my all-time top five favorite games, bar none. Like, I, I just love Legend of Dragoon. Um, ugh, just the colors, the the graphics, just everything about it, the story, the, the gameplay. <laughs> um, just looking back at this, uh, it's such a, such a well-made game. I, 
thought there was somewhere like a really nice shot of the ah, just the back too. Really, really cool stuff. And yeah, this is 112 pages, unfortunately. Um, I thought there was a map. Maybe not. Or I just... Oh, there we go. Whoa. The color, man. <laughs> um, here we have Halo 2, which is the only uh, first-person shooter that I have because you don't really need a strategy guide for a first-person shooter because um, it's straightforward. You go there, you, you kill some dudes, and you keep going. <laughs> Uh, but I, I loved Halo 2 so much that I picked it up, and it honestly, for a game that came out in 2004, that is pretty darn good graphics. I, I guess that that's not, not really a screenshot of the gameplay itself, but do they have anything like really big that shows the gameplay? It just looks really good, and, and as of this uh, recording, uh, Halo, the Master Chief Collection is coming out. In just a few short weeks, and I cannot wait. I guess, uh, to an extent, they're useful for the maps uh, to see where all the different weapons are, but I, I never used the actual walkthrough for this, like, ever. Um, to look at, yes, but not for um, the layout of the maps. But uh, it could be useful. I mean, this is Beaver Creek, so it's, it's online. It really was a good-looking game for its time. Um... <sighs> World of Warcraft. Uh, this uh, this is kind of like why strategy guides were made. Uh, and as you can see, this one's really beat up uh, because I've just used it so, so much. Um, like whenever that starts happening, I feel bad, but no. Oh, I, it's because it was whenever I would play the game, I would always have it by my side. Wouldn't necessarily look at it every time. And another thing too, the layout for for this is perfect. It is excellent. Uh, they have the tabs that let you know which one, which section that you're at. As you can see here, it's a little bit lighter, uh, but they also had comics in between, um, and they're hilarious. Uh, there's one of them. Uh, that was uh, an old man. He's like, can you pass me that book? And the character, the, the main character is like, but it's like right there. It's like right beside him. And it's just, I like that they would have, oh, there it is. There you have it. I love that. I love that. Um, so they would have that every once in a while to break something up. And there's just so much information. There's not only just like the game itself. Uh, and all the quests and all uh, and then all the statistics for the items and all the goods and stuff But also the history uh, like I said the lore alone like the history cities of Azeroth, Darnassus uh, World factions just uh, so cool all the all the races it gives you More background to a game that already has tons of information and just gets you right into the groove of wanting to play it and, and caring more about it to an extent yeah, fantastic, fantastic strategy guides. And there's so much in, obviously, a, uh, an MMO uh, that they created a second edition here. And even that, uh, like, uh, they would come out with different editions. This is the latest one that I have, so I had the second edition. And uh, they created so many more because the game's constantly evolving. There's always, like, a new dungeon, a new patch that changes things up. Um, it gives you where all the locations are. I just love this, um, but yeah, this they have to constantly update because there's just, um, you can't really do it. Uh, the Atlas here, this is more so for collecting purposes, uh, just to kind of look at the maps and, and um, take time to appreciate them, I guess, because you're not really going to use any of this information in the game. The other two, yes, because there's tons of information there. I guess maybe if you had to go to a specific spot and you wanted to find out where it was. Uh, but uh, I just remember like I just remember the, looking at it and enjoying ah oh, the wetlands. Yeah, that was fun. Good PvP times there, I believe. Um, let's keep going. Uh, the Dungeon Companion, which was the first one. Uh, I'd like to know what year this came out in. That would be interesting to me. Did not tell me? First page doesn't have it. Okay, uh, but yeah, this is something they would have to constantly update to to, to accommodate all the new games that come out and all the, the dungeons. So. Really cool stuff. I, I love uh, Blizzard uh, strategy guides. Uh, another Pokemon here, uh, Heart Gold version and Soul Silver, uh, the DS remakes. 
This one's pretty good too, but I think halfway through uh, the game, it, 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 it stops <laughs> having the walkthrough, because I think that's one of them that does go into two parts. Here is StarCraft II, which I played a ton of, and, and like I said, if you've never played an RTS, it's perfect because it explains everything for you and it gives you all the different strategies. There's so much, so many different strategies in an RTS, but it at least gives you the basics so that you can go in there not having played anything before, uh, not having played one before, and kind of do all right. <laughs> um, makes me want to play StarCraft 2 again. I, I played the crap out of StarCraft 2 and World of Warcraft and Diablo 2 uh, and Warcraft 3. I love Blizzard games. Um, Here's Grand Theft Auto V, which I really didn't need a um, strategy guide for because the, the missions are pretty much uh, to the point. Uh, but it, one thing uh, I will say is, is to get 100% completion for every mission, it tells you what to do. So that's kind of cool. Um, I, I never really went for that, but uh, if you wanted to, uh, it's all there so you can completely beat the game. Um, the, the one thing I do like, though, is kind of because the game is so gigantic and that's kind of like what I like to get strategy guides for is big games uh, where there's just so much to do so much to explore to kind of get every location in this game to find out everything that you could possibly do because the game's so big it can't introduce you to everything um, like all these different locations you can do something else you can do, play a different sport you can some kind of interactivity um, and that's probably why I like Grand Theft Auto games so much as well it's because it's such a big world and as they slowly get bigger, they add more stuff so it feels more alive. Uh, this is a new one that I picked up with my girlfriend. Uh, we were at a hawk shop and uh, she saw this for $5. It's the Fable 3 uh, strategy guide. I don't even have the game yet. I, I know I will pick it up eventually. Um, and I was like, five bucks sold hardcover. That's awesome. Um, so. I, I, I like finding these in the wild every once in a while. It, it, it doesn't happen often, but when it does... Uh, let's look at Dark Souls real quick. So I got four left to go. Uh, so Dark Souls, you pretty much need this because this game is so freaking hard. <laughs> uh, and it's one of my favorites to look at uh, just because there's so many different monsters and they did a really good job with the layout of this. I find anyway. And all the weapons and stuff. Oh, such a difficult game, though. It's, a, it's an essential. It's a necessity. That's what it is. Um, Skyrim is one of the main strategy guides that I have. I wish I would have gotten the Collector's Edition strategy guide, uh, but I didn't. Uh, but this is still packed, packed with information. Um, because, once again, Skyrim is a gigantic game. But look at this. Um... I always have this on my side when I'm playing the game. Not necessarily to like cheat or anything and use the walkthrough, but just like in case, because there's just so many quests and I want to say, okay, well, which which path do I want to go with next type of thing? Uh, I don't I don't read ahead to see what I'm going to be heading into, but I, I look at okay, if I do these quests now, can I go? Can I kind of like string them along to a few other quests if I go in a different area type of thing? Um, and also use sometimes the the maps. Uh, maps I, I use uh, quite often actually um, just to have so I know the layout of uh, the dungeon that I'm going into and, and figure out how, where I need to go to get out if I have to um, but really really awesome stuff okay and the last two so let's go with Nino Kuni uh, Wrath of the White Witch on the PS3 I love this uh, strategy guide. It is fantastic. Uh, this is, I think it's the collector's edition. I could, I, or it might just be the regular one. I don't know. Either way, um, what an amazing game. Uh, just the art style. It's like a, a real life anime. Really, really nice stuff. And last but not least, the Legend of Zelda uh, Link Between Worlds collector's edition. Uh, which my girlfriend got me. And look at this. It's a hardcover, gold all around. I like this because you look at it and it's something that you could see in the game. Like you could see this, like Link walking around and finding this book. Or it's like in a regular RPG and this is a book that would have spells in it or something. Uh, gold pages as well. Uh, just, you know, they really treat Zelda like it is 
the king of games, and you know, I'm not gonna disagree with that either. Um, you don't necessarily, well, certain Zelda games, I guess you do, or, or you could. More so like the earlier games, I'm talking about like Zelda 1, like The Legend of Zelda on the NES. Oh man, there's no map system at all. <laughs> Unless you have to find them and that's just, ugh, it's difficult. But anyway, there you have it, my entire uh, Strategy Guides collection. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thank you all for watching. You've been bearded in. Beardage.